am excited about starting a brand new series today called How to Deal with Drama. And um, I am uh, really looking forward to this next four-week series. If you're listening by way of iTunes, we say welcome to all of you. If you're watching on YouTube, the Canvas Church YouTube channel, we say welcome to each of you as well. I think you're going to enjoy this morning. It'll be a great time. And of course, all of you who are here in the house, give yourself a big yell. Would you do that? Very nice. Very nice. So the series, How to Deal with Drama. You know, we all have it. Some way, shape, or form, somehow, we all have drama in our lives and things going on. And um, it's uh, it's just a part of the way things are. And if we'll understand this thought process that we'll never escape drama, we have to learn how to deal with it. Uh, We'll get it better off that way. And then if we'll say, God, how do you want me to deal with the drama in my life? If you just take just a second and go through all your files in your brain... You're going to know the dramatic times that happened. The times where everything is out of control and everything was difficult and uh, -and so-and-so was acting weird and, you know, uh, uh, Thanksgiving went chaotic because of this and and you just go, all the drama in my life, I just need to uh, take things a little slower for a second. Everyone's got drama happening. It's just inevitable. But we want to have the care to respond to drama the right way. So we started with today, and we started with this thought process of cardboard stories. And it's going to make a lot more sense in a few more minutes what we're going to deal with all of these cardboards. But it kind of will basically center on this. Everybody's got a sign. And our lives are being written on the front of this sign. All the drama that happens. Everybody's got a sign. We've all got something that is defining us at the moment. A sign. And you can see that we even with the decoration and some of the things that have happened, that some folks have had some signs. And we're going to save some of that till later on in the service. But our signs, our boards, tell our story. The fronts of those signs sometimes are horrid things, difficult things. Things that have really stretched us and taken us to places of wondering if we were going to snap and wondering if we were going to make it through there and everything. But today, basically, the punchline of the morning is this. For every front of the sign that we've gone through that's been difficult, there is something God is writing on the back of the sign that's for His glory. And God's taking those things that we didn't know we could handle and we didn't know we could make it through. We didn't know we could live through. And he's saying, you know, it's rough, it's difficult, but watch me create a testimony out of this situation. And I'm so glad for that. You know, I've got my own sign. And uh, I'll get into it a little bit later. There was a time in my life where I I was mad at God. And I was mad at the church. A lot of people would agree for some really great reasons. For some really, like, I'm with you, Aaron. You know, you can can hold that. You can can hang on to that. I had a sign. I had a sign. I had a front of my sign. Most of us do. Most of us do. So there's a lot of stuff that causes drama. And the byline of this series is life's dangers, disasters, and drama queens. How many of y'all know some drama queens? Yeah. And that is not limited to the female species either. (laughs) Don't look at anybody in the room. How many of you guys know crazy people bring drama? (laughs) And some of you don't know that because you still hang out with them. (laughs) Or live with them or are related to them. But crazy folks bring drama. And some of you don't really know what I'm talking about, so I put together a little list, a little list in case you don't know who these crazy people are, um, so that you can spot them by these characteristics. So I have a few of them for you. Um, Christian, come on up here real fast, real quick. I've, I've got a few things that will kind of show you what crazy people are. Again, do not look at anybody in the room. First, and you come close to me. Don't stand on the other side of the stage. Here we go. Right, that's perfect. Crazy people sometimes are space invaders. They're close talkers all of the time. Yeah. And we've got a solution for that. If you stand with your foot out and lean your weight on your back, no matter how the crazy person comes in, you can kind of do this a little bit. And you can kind of hold those crazy people at distance. How many of y'all know close talkers? There are some folks like that. Don't, don't go away. I've got, another, I've got a few others. Here we go. Um, they, I, this, this is one really, real pet peeve. 
they always try to one-up you. Crazy people try to one-up you. Oh, man, you wouldn't believe what, 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 what happened to me today. Um, I, 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 w- I saw a burning building, and I ran in, and I saved four children out of there. And they're the first people that say, that's nothing. That's nothing. And you go, whoa, well, yeah, no, that's something. And they always try to one-up you, and they always try to take... Those are crazy people. Move on. Here we go. Um, crazy people, brand new handshake guy. Brand new handshake guy. You never know what to expect with this guy. He goes, hey. And you don't know what to do, and he's got all the... And you just feel like, yeah, you just... Brand, brand new handshake guy. I'm always lost with those guys. I never know what to do. Um, next one. Uh, crazy people, they don't possess the ability to filter their comments. They don't possess that ability to know when to say the thing that they were thinking. How many of you know not everything we think is necessarily anything that needs to come out? Oh, boy. Some of you need to really... <laughs> Crazy people, ask your advice, and then they don't take it. It happens a lot in ministry. You know, 10 o'clock at night. They're the ones calling me at 10 o'clock at night, and they go, Pastor Aaron, I just need your advice on something. I need your advice if I should buy, you know, these two Mercedes um, cars and I just need to. And I'm like, well, did you get a raise at Burger King? And they're, um, <laughs> you, you, and then next they pull up to church in that thing. And, nine, you know, 90 days later, they are having their cars repossessed. And, so, and you, why'd you call? Why'd you call me at night? Um, anyway, um, here's one. Here's, I, I heard this one yesterday. Alec actually told me about this guy, this guy. Um, it's Touchy Feely Guy. He's talking to you. No, no, let me do it. He goes, hey, 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 how you doing? How you doing, man? How you doing? And, or, or they have a conversation with you while they touch you. Just a really odd, you know. It's just, it's just odd. It's just those are some of those people like that. And they will cause drama in your life. The last one is this, and it's a combo. Um, crazy people have crazy eyes. And they have crazy pets. They have both. And so with those helps... We thought that you could circumvent some drama. Can you give Christian a hand as he goes? Thank you, man. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Anyway, that is just probably unnecessary, but we're just trying to help a little bit. We want to talk today a little bit about a guy who had a huge amount of drama in his life. And I'm going to tell you right now, his name's hard to pronounce. Um, if you're taking notes, we're going to get things rolling, and I'm going to give you the best, to my, the best of my ability um, help in how to understand the story of this oddly named um, young man and everything. I guess his life started out all right. He was royalty. His dad was heir to the throne over Israel. But his grandpa started going kind of wacko, and we talked a little bit about Saul and David in the last couple of weeks. King Saul had kind of lost his heart to live for the Lord, had lost his ability to be a worshiper. He kind of got into some odd ways of thinking, and, and he was just always in torment. And, and, and God says, I'm going to take that throne from you, Saul. I'm going to take that from you because I need to establish somebody right there on the throne. And so King Saul wasn't getting the throne. His son Jonathan wasn't getting the throne. We're going to talk today about his grand, the grandson named Mephibosheth. You think I'm making it up after the craziness about the crazy eyes people. But his name really was Mephibosheth. So everybody, um, uh, say it with me. Say Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth. Some of you just sneezed. That wasn't correct. Say Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth. Okay. For short, we can call him Meph. M-E-P-H, if that works a little bit. But we'll kind of walk through this whole thing um, as we learn about um, Mephibosheth. It is an amazing story, and it's the kind of story you need to kind of hold in your pocket close to your heart because it gives us such amazing insight into God's heart. This is actually one of the greatest understandings of the heart of God. And maybe some of you have been here with this story. Maybe some of you have, 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 have...